Well, good morning. Thank you very much for joining me on this video. I want to talk to you this morning about leases, rental agreements, and service contracts. Some of you old timers will know what I'm talking about. You've been in the business a number of years. At some point in time, you've purchased a hot water tank as a closing gift. You didn't necessarily want to, but you needed to because you missed on the agreement of purchase and sale, itemizing it as a rental item. Number six in your agreement of purchase and sale, under a heading rental items, including leases and lease to own, it states the following equipment is rented and not included in the purchase price. And somehow either the listing agent missed it on the listing or you missed it on the agreement of purchase and sale. It didn't get itemized. The buyer on closing found out that there wasn't an owned hot water tank. He states that he wants to have his own owned one. He doesn't want a rental agreement. And so you've got to make arrangements to provide that for him because you didn't indicate on the agreement of purchase and sale that it was in fact a rental item and he agreeing to assume it. Well, where once all we had to worry about was hot water tanks, it's expanded way beyond that now. Now we find furnaces, we find air conditioning units, we find water softeners, we find water filtration systems, we find solar panels, and the list goes on and on and on. The number of things in a home that can be rented and are expected to be assumed by the new buyer. And it's important that you don't miss these things. I've mentioned before in videos Form 820 called the Residential Information Checklist. It's a little bit like the seller property information sheet, except it isn't a mandatory part that's given to the buyer, but it's a, an itemized questionnaire that you go with the seller item by item. And on the residential information checklist, number 18 says, are there any conditional sales contracts, leases, rental agreements, or service contracts? Example, furnace, alarm system, hot water tank, propane tank, and so on and so forth. And it causes you to ask that question. And at the end, it causes the seller to sign that. And then he can't very well say, well, I told you. And it becomes clear who's responsible if it's missed. But it also causes you to raise those questions and identify those sort of things. So you don't miss them. And then the, the uh, item number six, I said, under rental item, it goes on to state the buyer agrees to assume the rental contract if assumable. So it states in there what is not included in the purchase price is a rental item and it causes the buyer to commit to assume it. The problem also, I mentioned it used to only be hot water tanks. It used to be you'd simply call the utility company, ask them to take it out because you want to put in your own. They'd come and take it out. They might require a month notice, they might not, and then you buy your own and put it in. Very simple. It's not that simple in many, many cases now, because there's more and more third-party companies that are coming in with long-term contracts. And in order for you to re, uh, get out of that long-term contract, they expect you to pay all the interest charges for the duration of the contract. So we see hot water heaters that cost two to $3,000 to have removed because they're under a, a lease rather than under a rental. And uh, we've seen furnaces, fifteen to twenty thousand dollars. I came across one that was solar panels with between fifty and sixty thousand dollars. Huge amount of money. So it's becoming not just two or three or four hundred dollars to replace a hot water tank anymore. It's very, very significant. And so there's two things you need to do. The first thing you need to do is you have to identify the things that could be rental items. So ask the questions itemize fully what those rental items are and then ask the seller to show you the contract that they're under because it may be as it was for often for hot water tanks a simple contract that can be terminated at any time with 30 days notice or something like that or it may be a long-term contract you got to find out if it's assumable you got to find out how much the payments are you got to find out what the penalty is to pay it out make sure that you understand that and then have a candid conversation with your seller about the options. The chances are, if you're representing a buyer, that buyer is not going to want to take over payments for a furnace. He's going to expect he's getting a furnace when he buys the house. So you're going to require the seller to pay out that contract or the air conditioning unit or the water softener or the water filtration system. So find out what the penalty is, find out what the cost is and discuss with your seller the potential of him paying it out. And then make sure that you don't miss the item 
and make sure that you don't confuse a rental item with a lease so we don't just have to buy a hot water tank as a closing gift. We don't have these problems at all. I hope that makes sense. I want to thank you very much for taking time to watch this video. I look forward to talking to you again next week.